In this video series, we are going to create the tabs by using the headless UI and also the Next.js. So first we create the Next app by using the Yarn Create Next app. So we go to any folders and paste the command here. And then we type yt the YouTube learned uh, headless. And then this is tab. So after we type the project name, it will start creating the project. And then we will uh, install the Tailwind CSS. And we also install the Headless UI. So after it finish, we go to the project and we copy this command. So we type uh, cd yt learn headless tab and then we paste the command to install the tailwind css and then we will go inside the project and we paste this tailwind.config.js and then we go to the project uh, with vs cook so we type cook dot and then we copy this config file and then go to tailwind.config.js and then we replace this. And then we also copy the global.css and then go to styles, global.css and then we replace all of this. Now we already installed the Tailwind CSS so now we can go back to the uh, documentations and then we create my tab components. So we go to the root folder and create folders and then create components. And then we new file and then we type my tab.js. Okay, my tabs. So we rename this as my tabs. And then our we type our AFCE. Now we have my tabs, and then we go to just copy this. And then we, we paste this. And I just remember that we have to install the headless UI. So we copy, we copy this. And then we go to the terminals and we paste this command. And then we also have to import the tab from headless UI we add. And then we back to the index. And then we uh, remove all of this and then we create a div and then we import my tab and then we remove import styles import image and also in import head and now we can go to try to add some styles with the help of the tailwind css so we have the background color blue of 400 and then the height of screen. The height is the same as height of screen. And then we click save and then we type young dev to start the local host. And then we go to local host 3001. This is because we start the server at the port 3001. We remove the, the the bracket and we save this. And now we can see the tab, the tab one, tab two, and tab three, and the content is changing. And now we are going to add some styles to uh, to the tabs. So first we go to uh, just copy from the example. So 
So if you look at this, we can see there is style at the outer div. So we can copy this and back to the project. And then we add, actually we can add a div. Now we can see there are some space and then we go to add the tab list. So we copy this one and go back to the tab list. And now we back to uh, localhost, we can see some shading. Uh, this is because we have some blue blue colors and we have round corners and there are some sp space in between and also has some paddings and then we go to add some styles to the each of the tab so we copy the with full uh, round corners and also the padding Y and small test form medium so we copy all of this And then we go to cast name. Now we can see the tab one is different. So we go to copy this. Now we have tab 1, tab 2, and tab 3. Now we are going to add the styles to the panels. So we can go back to the, the panels. And now you can see the panels also has some styles because we want to have some space in between the tabs and also the content. So we uh, paste this. Now we have some space, and then we go to here and add the class, which is the background right round corners, and also padding free unit to the panels. So we may need to add add to all of them because we hard cook the data. Now we can see the content 1, the content 2, and content 3. So we copy this class and then we paste to others. Now we can see tab 1, tab 2, and tab 3 and you may uh, try to uh, put this into the centers so we try to uh, add mx auto the margin x auto so it will place in the at the center of the web page at this stage, we can see if we click on the tab 1, tab 2, or tab 3, we cannot see any difference. And we may not notice we already selected tab 1. So now we are going to add the class to the project. So every time you select one tab, the the style is should be different. And first, we are going to import the class name. And i show you what it is. 
And we are going to install this class name and the benefit of this is to add the, add the uh, logic inside the class name. So for example, if this is true, it will append the class bar behind after the foo. So we go to install this. We type yarn add class name. And then we go to the tab and we back to the documentation. So we use selected inside the class name so we can Select this and then add the curly bracket. And then on the top, we in import the class names from the class name. And then after this, we use create a function selected, and then we use a curly bracket, and then we add the class name. And then we use BG brew five hundred test white otherwise we use test brew 700 and then we click save and then we type young dev and then we can go to The local host, how we can see if this is selected, the style is different. So we can copy this uh, this tab and then we duplicate this, and then we change this to tab two and tab, four. and then we remove the original one. And now you can see if you click on different tab the style is changed so the user knows which tab he is clicking on now we are going to show how to disable a tab and also manually activate a tab so let's do how to disable the tab and to disable the tab this is very easy we just need to add the disabled props to the specific tab so for example, we go to <coughs> the tab 2 and then we add disabled and then we save. And now if we back to the local host and then we click on tab 3, it can go to content 2. And now if you go to tab 2, you can see the cursor do not change to pointer. So we cannot click on this. So this is how to disable the tab. And so uh, the other things is how to manually activate the tab. So what it means is uh, if you rather not change the current tab until the user press enter or space and this is the need on how to use the manual.
So this is manually activate the tabs. So for example, we can see if you click on the left right arrow, it will change the content immediately. So let's try to add the to the tab top groups. So after we click on we put this at the tab top group and save it. And now if we go back to the website, and now you can see if we type, uh, if we press the left right arrow, you can see the content do not change until we press enter. You can see it changed to content free. Or if you press left arrow and go to tab one, and then we mouse over it and tap it, now it changed to content one. So it will not change the content even though you uh, you put the arrow, you you press the arrow key to the tab three until you press it or you, uh, you, you enter, you press the enter key or you enter the space key. So it will change the content. In this part, we can make the tabs Allies in vertical by just entering the props, the vertical props at the tab dot group. So let's have a try. And now we go to here and type vertical and click save. Now you can not see any difference because we have to add the first column at the tab dot list. So we add press columns and click save. Now you can see the tabs is in vertical orders. And you may ask why we have to add this vertical. So let's take a look. If we do not add the vertical, and now you can see it's still vertical, but if we try to control by using the keyboard up and down key, you can see we cannot control the tabs. But after we mentioned that this is vertical, now you can see we can select the tab by typing, by, by pressing the up arrow key or down arrow key. And now we can go to another topic, which is uh, the default values. So for example, now if we refresh the page the default value is is the tab one. If we want to switch to uh, tab three, then we have to add the default index is equal to two, because this is zero, one, two. So we have to add the default values. Default index is equal to two. So now if we refresh the page, now you can see it is uh, selected. The tab three is selected, and this is the default values. So this is how to make the tab vertical, and also how to set the default tab.